Located in southeastern Africa, the country of Tanzania is a wildlife traveler's dream. It is home to many of Africa's most amazing animals, has some of the world's best wildlife viewing destinations, and is home to Africa's tallest mountain. In this video, I'm going to help you start planning your safari trip to Tanzania by outlining some of the country's top parks, showing you what my recommended safari looks like, giving you some advice on when the best time to travel is, and giving you my recommendations on what to pack for your safari experience. Over the decades, the country of Tanzania has done an incredible job of identifying the most important wildlife areas within its borders and protecting those lands. If you want to go on safari in Tanzania, you certainly won't have a shortage of destinations to choose from. The country is home to 18 national parks, 10 major game reserves, 2 marine park reserves, 13 forest nature reserves, and 3 game controlled areas. In order to help you narrow down which parks and wildlife refuges to visit during your safari trip to Tanzania, I have narrowed down the list of options to my top 10 wildlife viewing areas in the country for you to review. In some cases, I included areas that have very high concentrations of wildlife to see. The Serengeti and Tarangir National Parks fall into this category. Other locations, like Gombe Stream and Mahale Mountains National Parks, were chosen because of the unique wildlife viewing opportunities that they afford travelers. Finally, parks like Kilimanjaro and Arusha National Parks were chosen both because of their close proximity to the city of Arusha and the unique landscape features that are found within the parks. The parks that I've highlighted in this guide are located in different regions of Tanzania, so the best time to visit each park is going to vary slightly. For instance, parks like Gombe Streams, Ruaha, and Nairir are much worse to visit in the rainy months of March and April than some of the other parks in Tanzania. Also, if you'd like to see the Great Wildebeest migration, then you'll want to coordinate your visit for when the wildebeest are in the Serengeti, which tends to be between the months of December and March. However, for the most part, the best time to go on safari in Tanzania is going to be between the months of July and October. These are the driest months of the year and the wildlife is much easier to spot because it is typically concentrated around the watering holes. Keep in mind, these are also the busiest months of the year for safari in Tanzania, so you might want to target the shoulder months of June or November to have your best shot at good weather and lighter crowds. Although Gombe Stream National Park is one of Tanzania's smallest parks, it offers visitors some unique and spectacular wildlife viewing opportunities. Made famous by Jane Goodall, who performed much of her chimpanzee research in the park, Gombe Stream National Park is one of the best places in Tanzania to spot wild chimpanzees. Because of its remote location, you'll either need to take a long bus or car ride from Arusha to get to Gombe Stream National Park, or take a bush flight. The park typically isn't crowded, which is a perk, but the amount of accommodations is limited. Because of this, you'll want to book your stay well in advance if you want to visit the park. Some of the common wildlife that you'll spot in the park include chimpanzees, various monkey species, bush buck, bush pigs, and leopards. One of the most underrated national parks in Tanzania is undoubtedly the incredible Mahal Mountains National Park. In addition to having the best chimpanzee tracking experience in all of Tanzania, the park also offers fishing and kayaking tours, spectacular beaches to enjoy, and a greater variety of wildlife for visitors to see than the nearby Gombe Stream National Park. However, its remote location means that you'll either need to take a long car ride or bush flight to get to the park, and accommodations near the park are limited. In addition, Mahal Mountains is also one of the most expensive parks in Tanzania to visit. Because of the limited accommodations, you'll want to make sure to book your safari well in advance if you'd like to visit the park. Some of the common wildlife that you will spot in the park include chimpanzees, various monkey species, bushbuck, hippos, crocodiles, and leopards. While it's no longer Tanzania's largest park, the beautiful Ruaha National Park still offers visitors some of the wildest and most authentic wildlife encounters in Tanzania. The park is famous for its breathtaking beauty, incredible ancient baobab trees, picturesque river, and dramatic landscapes. If you're coming to Tanzania to see African wild dogs, which are quite rare, 
then Ruaha National Park may be your best bet to see them. The park is also home to some unusual antelope species that are harder to find in some of the country's other parks. Because of its relatively remote location, Ruaha National Park doesn't get as busy as some of the more famous parks in Tanzania. However, the park also doesn't have as much accommodation options as the busier parks do. Because of that, you want to make sure to book your safari in Ruaha well in advance to ensure that you have a place to stay. When you visit, I would make sure to target the dry season in Tanzania. During the wet season, wildlife can be much more difficult to spot because the animals are not congregating around the watering holes. Some of the wildlife that you can expect to see in Rowaha National Park include African wild dogs, giraffe, zebra, buffalo, elephants, lions, cheetahs, leopards, and spotted hyenas. One of the newest national parks in Tanzania, Nyerere National Park is now also the country's largest. It was formed from a portion of what was the northern region of the Cellulose Game Reserve. The large expanses of raw African wilderness in the park really showcase the beauty of the African savanna. If you love elephants, then you'll love Nyerere National Park, as it is one of the best places in Tanzania to witness the annual elephant migration. If you visit during the right time of year, you'll get to see thousands of elephants in the park. The park is rather remote, so you'll either need to take a long drive or bush plane to get there, so plan accordingly if you want to visit. The park is also in a malarial region of Tanzania, so you'll want to make sure that you have the proper mosquito netting and insect repellent for your safari. When you visit, I would make sure to target the dry season in Tanzania. This is another park where wildlife can be much more difficult to spot because the animals are not congregating around the watering holes in the rainy season. Some of the wildlife that you can expect to see in Nyerere National Park include elephants, African wild dogs, crocodiles, hippos, various species of antelope, curly horned greater kudu, and sickle horned sable. The parks that I've outlined so far in my top 10 list of wildlife destinations in Tanzania are all great locations to go on safari, but they're also rather remote and some are best for seeing certain animals like chimpanzees. If you're visiting Tanzania and going on safari for the first time, you'll want to get the best overall safari experience possible. I'm going to outline the itinerary for my recommended 6 day Tanzania safari. This itinerary will take you to some of the country's most iconic national parks and wildlife refuges. The parks in my itinerary include Serengeti National Park, the Ngorongoro Crater Conservation Area, Tarangir National Park, Lake Minyara National Park, with the optional choice of seeing Arusha National Park and Kilimanjaro National Park. The benefits of visiting these parks on your safari include the fact that they are easier to get to so you can see more, offer the widest range of wildlife viewing opportunities, and they don't require a plane ride to get to, so they are typically cheaper to visit. To hit all the parks on my recommended list, I suggest that you target six days for your safari itinerary. Using the itinerary that I outline here, you'll be able to hit all six parks on my list. Keep in mind, your permit for the Ngorongoro Crater will only allow you 24 hours access to the crater. So you'll want to plan to arrive early on night two and spend the night near the crater so that you can start your safari first thing in the morning. If you'd like to plan a shorter trip, I would suggest cutting out a stop at either Arusha National Park, Kilimanjaro National Park, or both. If you'd like to spend a longer amount of time on safari, I would suggest adding either stops at one of the other parks not outlined on my itinerary or adding an extra day in the Serengeti. With the second largest concentration of wildlife in Tanzania outside the Serengeti, Tarangir National Park is definitely a park you'll want to have on your Tanzania safari itinerary. It isn't located on the traditional safari route and therefore is typically left off the itinerary for shorter safaris. This means that it is typically much less crowded than the other big parks in Tanzania. During the peak safari season, the wildlife is typically very concentrated within the park which means there is excellent wildlife viewing opportunities. The park even offers night safaris, which is an incredible experience. 
If you would like to see Tarangire National Park, I would recommend avoiding the wet season as the wildlife tends to be dispersed inside the big park and can be difficult to spot. On safari in the park, you can typically expect to see elephants, lions, leopards, cheetahs, buffalo, wildebeest, giraffe, and over 500 different bird species. What Lake Minyara National Park lacks in size, it makes up for in show. There are as many as 11 different ecosystems within the small national park, which means there is a wide variety of wildlife that call the park its home. The big draw on Lake Minyara is the famous tree climbing lions. Few other places in Africa can you see lions who climb trees as often as in Lake Minyara. However, one of the more underrated aspects of the park is that it offers probably the best opportunity in Tanzania to see elephants up close. The wildlife in the park is typically concentrated into small pockets, which makes getting close much easier. Among the animals that you will typically see in Lake Minyara National Park are lions, elephants, giraffe, baboons, buffalo, wildebeest, leopards, and a wide variety of birds. The Ngorongoro Crater is perhaps one of the best places in all of Africa to see all of the five big animals of Africa in one day. This includes the increasingly endangered black rhino. Because the crater is protected by steep walls that has available water all year round, the grazing animals in the crater don't need to migrate. This attracts all of Africa's big predators who can also be found in the crater all year round. The only downside to visiting the Ngorongoro Crater is that it can be quite busy during the peak safari season, so you'll want to make sure to book your safari well in advance if you'd like to see it. The animals that you can expect to see while on safari in the crater include black rhino, lions, spotted hyena, elephants, cheetah, zebra, wildebeest, leopards, and so much more. Home to the Great Migration, and with some of the most diversity of wildlife that you will find almost anywhere in Africa, the Serengeti National Park is one of the most iconic wildlife destinations you'll find in the entire world. It is one of the most coveted safaris in Africa, and for good reason. It has some of the most authentic wildlife viewing opportunities, is one of the best places to spot Africa's big predators, has excellent accommodation options, and even offers hot air balloon safaris. Best of all, it is also one of the cheapest parks in Tanzania to visit. If you're going to visit the Serengeti, I would recommend taking the time to tour both the north and the south ends of the park. It's a big park and you'll enjoy seeing as much of it as you can. The Serengeti borders the Maasai Mara in Kenya, so if you really want to extend your safari itinerary, you can book a tour of the Maasai Mara on the tail end of your Tanzania safari. Among the wildlife that you can expect to see while on safari in the Serengeti include lions, elephant, giraffe, leopards, wildebeest, zebra, buffalo, and much more. Home to Africa's tallest mountain and the world's tallest freestanding mountain, Kilimanjaro National Park is a park unlike any other that you'll find in Tanzania. Most who visit the park do so to climb the mountain, but it is also a decent safari location if you're looking to add on a park either before or after you tour the other big parks. It is far less likely that you'll spot any of Africa's big predators such as lions inside the park, but you do have a good chance of seeing other wildlife like 
elephants, buffalo, bushbuck, antelope, and possibly even leopards. One of the biggest draws to visiting Arusha National Park is its proximity to the city of Arusha and Kilimanjaro National Airport, which makes it a great option if you'd like to add on a park either before or after your safari in the other big parks. It is relatively easy to get to and has some truly breathtaking landscapes that you can explore. One of my favorite spots inside the park is the giant fig tree that has a tunnel carved in it that you can actually drive your car through. The park may not offer as good of opportunities to spot lions as other parks, but you do have a great chance of spotting other wildlife like giraffe, buffalo, elephants, hippos, zebras, spotted hyenas, and even leopards. If you haven't been on safari in Africa before, you're probably wondering what you need to bring with you. Don't worry, you're not alone. Unless you've been before, you likely aren't familiar with some of the general guidelines for going on safari. This includes which items are essential to bring and which you can do without. In order to help you prepare to pack for your safari, I've outlined some general packing guidelines that I'm going to share with you. The first of which is to pack light. You are going to be moving around quite a lot while on safari, and room in the vehicle is going to be probably very limited. You don't need to bring your whole suitcase with you when you go on safari. I would suggest just packing the essential items that I outlined for you in this guide. The next tip is to bring protection for the mosquitoes. Some of the parks are in malarial danger zones, and the last thing you want to have happen while you're on safari is to get sick. Most of the camps and the lodges at the parks will have mosquito netting, but it never hurts to be prepared and bring one of your own just in case. The third tip that I can give you is to pack neutral colored clothing. While on safari, you don't want to wear clothing that will attract the animal's attention. You want to be an unnoticed observer while on safari, and neutral colored clothing will help you do that. The final tip that I have for you is to pack layers. It can be blistering hot during the day in Tanzania, but get pretty cool at night. Make sure you pack layers and are prepared for the temperature shifts while on safari. With those general packing guidelines in mind, here is a list of clothing that I would recommend that you have with you while on safari. I consider these essential items that you won't want to be without while you're on your safari adventure. This includes breathable pants, breathable t-shirts, comfortable hiking shoes, hiking socks, a jacket or fleece, a wide brim sun or safari hat, and a rain poncho. In addition to the list of recommended clothing that I suggest that you bring with you on safari, there is also some other gear that I would consider essential and recommend that you pack and bring with you as well. This includes items like a backpack to keep your stuff, mosquito netting, binoculars to spot wildlife, motion sickness pills if you get car sick easily, your camera, a camera beanbag to help stabilize your camera in the vehicle, sunscreen, and insect repellent with at least 40% DEET. Thanks for watching. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for more short videos and Instagram TV episodes, and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more of my premium video content. And of course, stop by my blog to review my travel advice, guides, and travel itineraries for many of this world's top travel destinations.